Greetings, Twin Flames. This is Lucida of Twin Flame RX, and I'm here on January 10th, 2020. Today is a full moon, and there's also a lunar eclipse, where they, there was a lunar eclipse earlier today. So we're still in this energy. With the full moon, we want to release whatever is no longer serving us. With the eclipse, we're getting illumination, so we're getting things that are coming to the surface, possibly for release or processing and then release. So try to be patient with yourself today and the rest of the weekend because in these energies, there's bound to be some misunderstandings possibly and just some jumping to conclusions. So try to just ground yourself and let go of all the negativity and all the energies that don't serve so that by the time we get to the full moon in two weeks, or I'm sorry, the new moon in two weeks, we're going to have this new energy coming in um, that's going to help us then to start, you know, our new phases of our journey and new relationships. Today's reading is about what these full moon and lunar eclipse energies mean to twins or mean for twins. We're going to look at the energies that the divine masculine is working with, the feminine and with the union. And if there's anything that needs to be clarified with karmic partners and situations, we'll look at that as well. So what I want to do first is to kind of shuffle and um, we'll look at the divine feminine's energy for now. Most of the viewers are divine feminine, so that should be your baseline. So if you're resonating with this reading, then most likely your divine masculine um, counterparts reading will resonate or will be true because you might not know exactly what they're up to depending on your stage of the journey. So I want to just say hello again if you're a regular subscriber. Thanks so much. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you know whenever I upload something. And if you're new here, welcome and thanks for joining us. So we hope that you stay and you become a subscriber and also click on that bell icon. But don't forget to save, share these messages, like these messages, these readings. Um, yeah, so <laughs> Just a reminder before we start that I do have a website and services. I'm full-time as a Twin Flame, um, a reader and a healer. So go to my website, TwinFlameRx.com, for more information on how you can get in touch with me. I just got a few new clients today that I worked with, and it's always nice to welcome in new clients, but also to keep in touch with clients that have been with me since the beginning of this channel, which is going on four years now. It's so crazy. Time flies. And my cards are really getting old here. So if you want to donate so I can get more tarot cards, I have tons of oracle cards. But I prefer tarot because it gives more accurate information instead of those frou-frou messages <laughs> that um, most of the oracle decks have. Okay, so I am shuffling so that we can get an idea of the Divine Feminine's energy in the recent past, present, and how the Eclipse energy is going to be affecting just what's going to be going on between the Divine Feminine and Masculine. So we'll look at each individual separately or each counterpart separately, again, starting with the Feminine. And I'm just going to shuffle one more time. We're asking Divine Source to illuminate for us what is to come. All right. So for the Divine Feminine, we have the Six of Cups in the recent past. We've got the Ten of Wands for the present. And the future energy is the Three of Wands. So these are some interesting energies the Six of Cups is letting us know that the Divine Feminine has been aware of the connection between him or herself and their masculine counterpart. And this connection with the Six of Cups is a soul connection, is something that keeps both parties up at night. Sometimes it's comforting, sometimes it's hard because, you know, the Divine Feminine is longing for this counterpart who, you know, may or may not have rejected them in the past. And 
there's just so much emotion that goes on with this and some of it's even stemming from past lives. So there's that knowing that there's a connection and there might have been some more signs and synchronicities that the divine feminine was noticing lately. At least with a lot of my clients, they're getting a lot of signs and synchronicities lately. Um, but this can become a burden here with this Ten of Wands. So if you feel burdened or heavy, what you want to do is release that energy or transmute it. What I often like to do is to write down everything that's bothering me, everything I want to release, and then burn it in the moonlight safely. Um, but I can't even burn sage in my place anymore because um, my neighbors don't like it. And you know what? I feel like they don't like it because they're negative. So um, I do burn it, but I have to keep it contained in the apartment. <laughs> So crazy. So anyway, if you're feeling heavy energy, smudging with sage or Palo Santo or any of those kind of purifying uh, flames and then purifying smoke is going to help carry that negative energy away from you. And when all that energy leaves, you're going to have room for light to come in, for positive energy to come in. And that's where in the near future, this eclipse and full moon energy is going to be ushering in this three of wands energy for the divine feminine. And what I'm thinking is that the divine feminine is going to find his or her creative spark again and, you know, create the third energy or use the third energy to fuel the mission of the divine feminine or the daily life of the divine feminine to keep the divine feminine going on the journey because it does get hard it is a burden with this ten of wands but there can be a renewal again of this spark of this creative uh, passion of wanting to and desiring to be together with their divine counterpart to create the third energy whether it be children or projects or their mission work, which is really spreading light and love and awakening people on this planet. Um, one of the reasons I haven't been around lately is because I've been trying to use my energy that I have left to send energetic rain to Australia. I cannot even look at the images of polar, um, polar bears, koala bears, and um, kangaroos like I've seen I've seen the koala a couple times and I immediately you know get very emotional because I love animals and I I just hate to know that there's so much suffering going on and those poor animals are just being consumed and it really hurts me so um, that's what my creative energy is going into is sending energetic rain and I've heard that there has been rain the last few days, and I've been really trying to send it. So as a light worker, if you're a divine feminine, even if you're the masculine, you can visualize rain. Um, send that loving rain to the rainforest also. Um, that's what I did when we had, you know, more intense fires going on in Brazil. Send that rain to the forests that are burning now because there's a drought, and that rain if you're visualizing it, and if you believe it's going to manifest, it will, but you really need to believe, and that's, you know, what we're being tested. We're being tested to use these powers that were given to us, these healing abilities many of us twins have, so that, you know, we can help others, we can help heal this planet. That's what we're here for. It's a big job. But somebody's got to do it, and that's what light workers are for. And if you're a twin, you know what I'm talking about. Unless you're brand new, and then you're just realizing that you have these abilities, you just have to tap into them. Okay, so I'm just changing, clearing the energy because we're going to look at the divine masculine now. So we're going to see what the recent past energies were for the divine masculine twin and what the near future energies are. Interestingly, two cards came out of the deck, and I will say what they are, the Strength card and the Hierophant. So what I'm thinking that is, is that the Divine Masculine is becoming more committed, at least in spirit, 
to this twin flame journey and the connection between themselves and their beloved and knowing that it's going to lead to somewhere it's making them stronger they know that they can feel it so they know that there's a reason why the divine feminine counterpart is in their life all right so we're gonna do one more shuffle and then cut oh boy so yeah, there's a little resistance going on with the Divine Masculine still. But they are making... Wow, same card in the recent past that the Feminine had. Oh my God, this is ridiculous. This is the same card we had for the Divine Feminine, and it's like crazy. Okay, so we have a different third card, which, you know, I thought I was having a deja vu for a second here. But this is really good because we're on the same page with the Divine Masculine. Apparently, the Divine Masculine in the recent past is re was recognizing the soul connection between themselves and the Divine Feminine with the Six of Cups. Again, that same card came up for the Feminine in the past energy. They're also feeling burdened. Same card in the same spot for the Divine Masculine, feeling this heaviness, wanting to let go of all the chains and the burdens. On their spirit, the Divine Masculine feels the same. So this is confirmation for any of you that are wondering if the Divine Masculine felt the connection ever. Yes, they have. And it's a burden, not in a bad way. It's just they don't understand it as much as the Divine Feminine in a lot of cases. I may be wrong, you know, because there are exceptions. But for the most part, Divine Masculine and Feminine are on the same page. It's just in the near future, what we have for the feminine was the three of wands, right? And for the masculine here, the near future card is a really good one as well, which is the knight of cups. So this means that they're getting ready, that they're going to shed the burdens and they're going to come forward with an offer of love to the divine feminine. So the masculine twin going through the same things, maybe at a slower pace at times or seemingly slower pace, Maybe they're um, transmuting energies differently. Maybe they're going through different karmic situations. But the key here is that the Divine Masculine is ready to offer their love in the future. They're getting ready to shed all of the burdens so that they can fill their own cup with love and then offer a cup of love to their Divine Feminine counterpart that is so beautiful. <laughs> wow. So I almost died when I saw these two cards come up the same and I really like that the divine masculine's energy is headed toward offering something more emotional to the divine feminine counterpart instead of hiding their feelings they're going to try to at least show in a gesture or show in communication or show by showing up <laughs> that they want to be in the divine feminine's life and that they do have love for the divine feminine wow that is awesome now we're going to look at the union, so I'm going to clear the energy a little. And we're just going to see what the combined energies are, but I think we already kind of know what they are, right? I mean, we had those same two cards pop up, and I'm shuffling in front of you so that, you know, strange things like that don't happen. Um, or, you know, I don't set them up to happen is what I meant to say. Okay, so this last shuffle and cut, I'm going to do one more shuffle and cut, and that's going to be our combined energy. So, combines energy between the Divine Masculine and Feminine Twin. Recent Past Chariot, Present Magician, all major kind of so far. Oh wow, an Eight of Swords in the near future. All right, let's just look at this chariot card. So in the recent past, both twins had moved forward on their journey together. So because they were both on the same page, feeling that soul bond, that soul connection, the past memories of the love that they have shared for eternity with their beloved, they've been moving forward on the journey. And both twins have been recognizing their magician self. And now you you have the opportunity to tap into your magician energy and alchemize or transmute or change the energy. So release the negative. So negative could be anything that is bringing your vibration down, worrying, being feeling guilt, feeling shame, 
these are all energies of the past, which you can't, you can keep reliving pain by being guilty, by feeling bitter, by feeling sad. You can relive the pain of the past and continue to suffer, or you can ask yourself to forgive yourself, ask your higher power to forgive you, ask whoever you need to be forgiven by your twin or others, ask for forgiveness if you can't do that for whatever reason, maybe the person has passed away, you can still use the Ho'oponopono forgiveness chant, which goes something like this. And I always say it in different orders. It really doesn't matter. But there's four phrases that go with it. It is, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. So I'm sorry is the first phrase. Please forgive me as the second. I love you as the third. And then the fourth is thank you. So, so you can change the energy of your life by anytime you feel guilt or pain or sorrow. You can think this in your head over and over and it transmutes the energy because your spirit is asking another spirit possibly for forgiveness. It's giving yourself a refresh, and that's what you need to be able to tap into your energy more so that you can see things with your third eye better, right? When you ask for forgiveness of the divine, you are really connecting with the divine and then accepting and being grateful for everything that you have is another way to connect with the divine. And that information is going to help you to discern energies around you better and how to you'll learn how to intuitively manage your own energy so that you can come into that perfect harmonious balance that you need to be in body mind and soul and whole within yourself Bef before that you can't have union with your twin you need to be in union with yourself in that way so both twins are tapping into this magician energy so they can heal themselves and by healing themselves and being whole within themselves, they're going to be able to come to the connection and allow that to work. Well, in the near future, there may be some resistance to that with this eight of swords, where there's this um, binding and blindfolding going on. So to me, this just rep represents the unknown. We all have fears of the unknown. We all fear what's going to happen in the future. But this is because we're human and we have these minds that ask us to fear. We were born, though, as a spirit into this body and our spirit has no fear, okay? And I do want to share like something really brief that I keep thinking about to let you know is that when you pass on, okay, you may think that a person that's passing on in a violent death is feeling pain, but their spirit leaves their body before the pain hits. And I know this for sure because I had a few near-death experiences and one was particularly bad in 2012 where people that saw my rollover car accident thought that I died. And the people that towed my car and had the car at the tow yard for me to come and identify ran up to me and hugged me when they saw me because it was like a miracle that I got out of their car, but it was because I had to come back for this mission. Okay, so when I was going over the cliff, <laughs> the mountainside, because I got hit off the mountainside by a truck, um, I asked for another chance because I never met my true love and, you know, I wanted that and I just, I knew that I completed my mission in my prior life to that. Um, but then, you know, I, I had no pain and I was in a waiting room and, and I can't, I was allowed to come back. I woke up about 45 minutes later, maybe 30, 45 minutes later, um, after, being unconscious, but I, I'm letting you know not to be afraid of the unknown because it's just our spirits have no fear and your spirit is not going to let you, if you trust your spirit, okay, that is God, you are a spark of God, 
your spirit, if you're connected to that, is not going to take you in the wrong direction, okay? And, and even if you are the fool jumping off the cliff, you're not going to get hurt if this is what you're doing because it's your true, authentic soul that's telling you to do it. I don't recommend driving in the mountains and trying to get hit by a truck. <laughs> that was, was not my intention that day. But it was an accident, and it opened up a whole new world for me because prior to that, I did not really connect with angels. And after that, it was Archangel Michael is the first angel that I trusted. <laughs> so, all right, so I want to um, help you guys understand this Eight of Swords, how we can not be afraid and feel blindfolded and like we don't have any idea what the future holds. We need to transcend that and trust, trust in our higher power, trust in our own spirit if it is connected to our higher power. Okay, so what the feminine twin needs to do in order to get past this is to surrender addictions, okay? So this can be substances, it can be food, it can be people, it can be sex, it says overworking. Um, you know, maybe you're a shopaholic. I mean, I am, I am like trying to still get rid of purses that I bought. I like had an addiction to handbags. <laughs> so I, you know, realized that that was me trying to, I guess, find meaning and purpose in life. And I was more of an addict of purses before 2012 because after that, everything changed for me. And those kinds of things were not important anymore. But whatever it is, you might be addicted to looking at your twin social media. And this is bringing you pain. Addictions are covering our pain. We just are self-soothing um, when we imbibe a substance and need to keep doing that to numb ourselves. So if you can surrender those addictions, those coping mechanisms, I know it's hard, but if you can slowly let go of some of those habits that you have, that will show that you have trust in the unknown because you're afraid. Uh, the fear is why people are addicted. They don't want to think about or worry about, you know, bills and what's going to happen tomorrow. But if you trust, and that's what one of the major things you need to do on this journey is to be able to trust in the universe, trust in the divine, trust in your own higher self, your spirit. When you let go of addictions or things that mask the possible pain, when you just trust and you don't worry and you just surrender to the unknown, you are going to be released from these ropes that are tying you up. Your third eye will open more, believe me, because I was also addicted to food. Like I would just keep stuff in my face because I wanted to numb the pain and it was pain for my twin during this journey because of what was going on between myself and my twin, I gained like 40 pounds and then I had to go and lose the 40 pounds. So I'm just saying that these things are going to help you to move forward on your journey so you don't feel like this in the near future. So any, any small steps that the feminine and even the masculine, I know they have addictions as well, but this will help both twins to move forward surrendering this, letting go of this, especially now it's a good time to let go or to declare that you're letting go. And then if you make a few mistakes along the way of trying to fully let go of whatever it is, you know, looking at the social media or, you know, eating your feelings or overworking, you know, whatever it is that you're doing to mask the pain of being on this journey, release that because it'll show the universe that you trust and that you believe in the promise of the journey, that you will have abundance, that you will have union with self and your beloved and the divine, but you need to trust. And so, wow, the divine masculine has to let go of frustrations. So it says frustration doesn't open any doors. The key to resolving a dilemma or dissolving a block is to take a breath, 
center yourself and regroup so that you may approach the situation more calmly. So yeah, I feel like a lot of times the divine masculine, they just retreat out of frustration. So they may not know how to answer a certain text if it triggers them and they become frustrated. And so they just like don't even approach situations or communication with the divine feminine, but they're getting tired of this. They're frustrated about that. So what will help to dissolve that is to just take a breath, center, regroup, and trust. Those shackles are going to come off that have been binding both twins when we release the coping mechanisms that are unhealthy and when we release the frustration of not knowing what's to come. So I'm going to pull one more card to kind of clarify if the divine feminine and masculine surrender their addictions and frustration during this full moon energy when there's the support or even in the future what is the new outcome because the this is based on the current energy before surrendering okay so if there's surrender wow we are going to have stability with the queen of pentacles and that was just i cut the deck and picked the next card so basically you see there's a big difference between being a f being fearful of the unknown and letting it cause you to stay stuck in that moving. I mean, at least if you're the queen of pentacles, you're maybe not moving, but you're standing your ground, you're grounded, and you're showing like, hey, I'm grateful that I have this humongous pentacle here. And, you know, I'm attracting more pentacles to me. That's if you release whatever it is that you are, again, masking your pain with or taking out your pain on, right? With frustration, you might get upset and blow your top, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to hide your feelings under your addictions, and you don't have to hide your feelings by blowing up or keeping that festering in. What you do have to do is to accept that you feel this way and realize you're human and you're going to want to run from pain and hide from the unknown. But the journey is about moving forward and not being afraid because when you trust and have faith in the divine, you are not afraid. Okay, if, you're, if you don't know how to trust in the divine or you're still afraid, you just have some more work to do on opening up to that connection with the divine. And I'm available again for sessions. I can help you clear whatever is, you know, a block for you on your personal journey. Everyone is different, but I've helped so many and I don't do any hocus pocus, all right? A lot of times I teach you how to clear your own energy because it's so important for us twins to know that. That's part of how we qualify to be in union. All right, our last two cards are the Archetype Kuan Yin for the Divine Feminine, but this is a message for anyone watching. So the message from Kuan Yin is about the Celestial Mountain. It says you have the ability to invoke divine power, to call the Celestial Mountain so that you might be gifted with the spiritual energy you need to attain your goals. Permitting beings that love you unconditionally to help you is an expression of spiritual empowerment. You empower the divine forces that can assist you to come to your aid and help you manifest your vision. So, okay, wow, the divine is letting us know that, okay, whatever Lucid has said about trusting the divine, letting go of addictions and frustration to become more stable and grounded and to attract more positive to you, that's good, but you can also ask for divine assistance. You can ask angels if you believe in angels or light beings or ascended masters, whatever it is that you believe. I mean, they're all light beings that I would ask. Um, they need your permission, though. Anyone on the other side would need your permission for them to act on your behalf, so your ancestors. Um, I know one of my, if you will, guides, which... I'm so um, rebellious that I even don't even want to have guides, okay, guys? Um, but, you know, my grandmother who passed away, we're really close, and she is one of my guides. She's come to my aid many a time, 
but I didn't ask for it necessarily. Now I'm asking her because I'm having like bigger challenges to help me, but she wouldn't come in to help me if I didn't ask. And that's the same for you. You need to ask your ancestors, your angels, light beings, ask for assistance and they will help you. Okay, Archangel Michael says he wants to be able to protect you and your divine union, but you need to also ask for their protection. Okay, so Archangel Michael also has a special message as we end this reading, and it's about maintaining positive thoughts because those positive thoughts are going to bring positive results. So that's just like what I was saying here for this queen energy when you are radiating gratefulness for what you already have in your life, knowing that the divine has already provided for you and got you through so many other struggles, not having faith is pointless. Worrying is pointless. If you ask the divine for help, if you ask the angels for help, you have nothing to fear. So you can let go of that fear and you can move forward. And you don't need coping mechanisms. You just have to always stay connected to the divine and the angels they will be there for you. Okay, so think positively as well because that's how you're going to basically create more positive feelings and then in the feeling, you're attracting more positivity to you. All right, the prayer here is divine love and wisdom. We call upon you now. We know that our minds and emotions are externally and continuously connected to you. We ask our higher selves to be aware and conscious of the love and light that is within every person and situation, no matter how difficult it may be. This journey is difficult. Sometimes I want out of it, but then I wake up the next morning after, you know, asking for a restorative sleep. Um, when I wake up, I'm ready for another day on the journey. So I hope that you feel that way too. I know it's a tough journey. I'm here to support you. So are the angels, so are your ancestors. Just ask. All you have to do is ask. I'm sending you all some Reiki healing energy now so that you may remember that whenever you feel fearful, there's nothing to fear. You need to just keep moving forward in faith and trust. And if you can do that, all the abundance in the world will be manifesting in